Today, let's play. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Today Let's Play. This time, I'm taking a look at a game that was, at the time of this video's creation, very recently released. And that game is Eden Gate, The Edge of Life. Eden Gate is an evocative, interactive story published by Hook. Hook is a newly formed global video game publisher, and they're focused on bringing indie games to all the great platforms like PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, Steam, Epic Games, and both Apple and Google. Eden Gate was written and directed by creator Matthew Sagey Burns. He's written numerous games and interactive fiction, such as Elisa and Exapunks, and was also a producer for Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST. He brings experience and all his creative energies to his latest project in Eden Gate. I discovered this game because I am superbly fortunate enough to be friends with the immensely talented, gifted, beautiful, and in every kind of way an awesome person, Bianca Gambrioli. As it so happens, Bianca is one of the artists that worked on Eden Gate, and I have to say, she was very good at keeping it all a secret until the game was finished. I didn't even know the name of the project she was working on until November 15th, 2022, when it was finally released. I purchased the game immediately after I got her message that the game was out, and I happily jumped in and started my first playthrough. Usually when I buy a game, it's after a bit of research, reading reviews, and so on. But this time I was going in blind, and it was kind of like the feeling you get when somebody gives you a birthday present or something. I was handed something completely unknown, but I could not wait to get it open and see what it was. And I was not disappointed. From the title screen alone, the game sets its mood. We are greeted by an image of a young woman suspended upside down in what appears to be some kind of liquid. The calm yet unnatural state of the woman promptly gives us a sense of disorientation and slightly claustrophobic apprehension. There's no music at this point, only the gently rumbling sound of being underwater, making us feel almost trapped in a situation that we do not understand. After hitting start, the feelings of anxiety and confusion notably increase, paradoxically in a strangely calm and peaceful way. The game builds tension through music, sound, and dreamlike imagery, culminating with our protagonist, Mia Lawrenson, waking up alone in a hospital. She has obviously been through something traumatic, and needs to be reminded of who she even is. Mia? Okay. She then begins her journey of not only self-discovery, but a journey of discovering what happened to her and the world around her. She explores the hospital in which she finds herself, only to discover that she is completely and inexplicably alone. That is, except for the strange, occasional ghostly appearance of a child, a small boy that seems to be trying to tell her something. Along the way, she finds ethereal clues which are actually disjointed memories that begin to put her past into some kind of order. She also finds other, more tangible clues that assist her in solving the riddle of what terrible thing has happened. In order to leave the hospital, Mia must solve various puzzles to move from one part of the story to the next. Sometimes she must discover codes to unlock doors, and other times she needs to move items in her environment to bypass an obstacle or create a new path. As she searches for the answers to solve these quandaries, she's presented with more memories and more clues that help in the unveiling of the truth regarding her situation. After making her way out of the hospital, Mia discovers that the city of Eden Gate is as eerily abandoned as the hospital she woke up in. It's painfully obvious that something cataclysmic has happened, but despite the challenges along the way, 
Mia carefully continues on in her quest to find answers. The complexities of her past relationships, both personal and professional, slowly come to light as more clues are unearthed as she makes her way across the city, helping to give us, the observers of Mia's fate, a deeper insight into her and the state in which we find her. Now, if you found that little synopsis a tad bit vague, I have to admit that was intentional. This is a game based in story and emotion. Actually, I find Eden Gate very much like poetry or painting. Poetry because of its enigmatic and indirect way of storytelling. The story unfolds itself in veiled explanation. It will not come out and hit you with an obvious message, but instead alludes to its essence through a gossamer reality, just as good poetry will. And I find it like painting in the same way that a group of people can all look at, say, any of Van Gogh's creations, but each person will experience something different. Van Gogh's painting doesn't change, but the emotional impact, the memories it stirs, the personal reaction of each individual that lays eyes upon it will be completely different and very personal. That said, my personal experience of this game will be different from yours in many ways, and I don't want to spoil your adventure by inadvertently influencing what you may think or feel while guiding Mia through it all. What I can tell you is that the overall tone is definitely not all rainbows and unicorns. Nope, not at all. This is a decidedly dark story. On the surface, surreal. But just below that surface, its nebulous reality connects with all of us. That connection is even more understood when you take into account that Eden Gate was created during the deepest part of the global COVID pandemic and its ensuing lockdowns. The feelings of isolation, uncertainty, discomfort, and even hope all come into play here in this emotionally moving game. And a huge part of that emotional weight in Eden Gate is attributed to the wonderful voice work of the protagonist and the brilliant soundtrack that accompanies us along the way. Actress Ellie Hayden, who plays Mia, has had her voice featured in such games as A Plague Tale Requiem, The Diofield Chronicle, and Elden Ring. And here in Eden Gate, she perfectly embodies, or in voices, the angst, trepidation, intelligence, and courage of our main character. Don't worry, Mia. We'll get through this. And <laughs> now I'm talking to myself. Great. The music throughout, as music so often does, maintains and influences our emotional state as we explore the story. Composer Larissa Okada's sensibility to the story is reflected in every note, every sound, with great empathy. Some of her past work includes music for a number of games, such as Mass Effect, Andromeda, Underdog, and Assassin's Creed Origins. Her soundtrack for Eden Gate keeps the player motivated and unnerved, creating an atmosphere that employs both anxiety and determination in perfect balance. If you have a couple of hours to spend and you're looking for a game that is stress-free yet very stressful, anxiety-ridden, yet peaceful, full of despair, yet full of hope. If that kind of adventure appeals to you, then I think you'll enjoy Eden Gate. It's not a shooter, it's not action-packed, but at the end, you'll feel as if you've been through something rather intense. Reading through reviews of Eden Gate, reception has been mixed. It's obviously not everyone's cup of tea, with some complaints leaning towards issues with not comprehending the arcane storyline. For me, however, it's precisely the ambiguity and semi-opaque mode of storytelling that I found so intriguing. A mysterious story, accompanied by well-crafted environments and a mesmerizing soundtrack. Yeah, count me in. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my review of Eden Gate, The Edge of Life, and got something out of it. And if you do end up playing it, or have already played it, please let me know what you think down below in the comments. I'd really like to hear what you have to say. 
I'm Lady Imperatrix, and I thank you for watching. Happy gaming, everyone, and we'll see you next time for another installment of Today Let's Play. Today, let's play.